Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I take it a great pleasure in addressing your prestigious forum of Sri Lanka Energy Managers Association Annual Sessions 2021. And I take this opportunity to congratulate the organizers of selecting a very timely and a very elaborative topic, Smart Grid as a Technology Option for Energy Transition. And uh, I will straight away go into filling my part of the gap in discussing with you Smart Grid, the opportunities and challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to bring this dialogue into a preamble in discussing four major trends, what we call the mega trends, that the future of our world is under transition. The future of our world will be defined and interpreted by these four mega trends. Diffusion of power, democratic shift, individual empowerment, food, water, energy access. Sociologists believe that the large institutes, powerful institutes are crumbling down and against which the individuals are getting empowered. Everybody likes to believe that the world is rotating around them and diffusion of power in one side and the individual empowerment in the other side is defining the entire market segment of the world. On the other hand, the shape and the color of our population is changing, demographic shift. Old population is growing and, uh, and the urban population is growing. With all this, the shape and the color of the society that we look that we have today will be in a massive transition in the time to come. In addition, the entire world is at a massive pressure regarding the environment. Food, water and energy are going to compete with each other in these limited resources. And by that, we are creating a pressurized world. The world's power is at a transition. Its society is at a transition. And everything is under pressure of resources. So these four mega trends are going to define our future. Anyhow, the look by these four trends, it is very clear that the society and the world that we are going to see is going to be different. And the challenges and the opportunities that are going to be there in this future are also going to be entirely different. So having that in place, we as engineers, energy managers, we are, we are in a question as to how that we are going to answer this question. These questions are going to be really, really tough. These questions are going to be new. These questions are going to be questions that we find difficult to answer. So what, are, what is our toolkit in answering these questions? In order to elaborate that particular point, I like to uh, bring forth a, a graph. This is in the x-axis what we see is the year and in the y-axis what we see is the number of transistors in a microchip. We see that with the, with the development of the time, the, this is at a steady growth. But, in order, but you will see that the y-axis is in logarithmic scale. So in order for us to understand this growth in a more tangible manner, I thought of plotting linear scale. If we plot it in linear scale, here 2000, if we see the number of transistors is somewhere there, 2020, we see the number of the growth for these 20 years looks astonishing. But if you extrapolate this curve and see what is going to happen in 2040, we will get amazed by seeing that 2000 was there, 2020 was there and 2040 is going to be there. So we have to brace and wait for this massive transformation. This is not a small transformation, this is amazing transformation because 2000 to 2020 we saw what sort of, we, we have experience, we know what sort of transformation we saw. And we are going to see 100 million times higher transformation, actually 10,000 times higher transformation in in next 40, 20 years to come. So 
the technologies in 2000 2000 we were thinking as dreams or as uh, fantasy or science fiction have become today reality machine learning internet of things artificial intelligence cryptocurrency blockchain robotics driverless cars virtual reality 3d printing all these things are today at the at the verge of rise if not fully developed at least it is substantially developed so in time to come in very shortly these things are going to come into the market these things are going to be realities of our world and through this development that we have to answer this question energy transition has to be answered through these technologies these smart technologies so this that's why i said the the topic is very timely topic is very pertinent and the topic is perfect how to address energy transition through smart technologies let's go and see what exactly is called smart grid smart grid comprises of primarily three things the connected things devices network and the infrastructure and the applications connected things devices infrastructure and the users this is the this is the source of this is what the basic outline of smart grid is going to be let's go a little bit deep into this let's go deep and deep into this uh, these boxes and try to understand exactly what are the components of smart grid and what exactly it can do and it cannot do prior for us to understand the challenges and the opportunities associated with this if we go one step down we will see that the devices are there devices are being connected to a network communication network these are either utility owned or public owned network and these networks bridge this relationship gap data communication between these devices to a server server is the one which is doing this data manipulation business it extracts it sucks data from these devices and pump it into a database pump it into a database this database is going to be the primary resource of this entire thing it is the structured database relational database which is which is containing all the data then the next step goes to the application that those are the applications which the people the consumers are going to use this is the this is the place where the entire value addition comes into the picture the application now if we go one even further you will see that this network layer comprises of basically three types or multiple of tiles virtual private networks by the by the communication providers utility owned networks built by electricity utilities mobile network operated vpns these are mobile devices and the public internet these things this complete set of network the complete set of network co comprises of this network layer then upon which we have another set of tiles erp servers enterprise resource planning servers gis servers geographic information system servers internet of things servers application interface servers these are the ones which will it open data to the public network this server layer and then it goes to the database layer and finally the applications erp enterprise resource planning geographic information system applications planning applications demand response applications distribu advanced distribution management systems control centers advanced metering infrastructures and uh, mobile apps web apps which are used by this public public so these things on top of this actually the users resides so these sort of tiled but layered structure tiled but layered structure this is very important two terms it must be tiled but it must be layered now 
that tiled and layered structure at the bottom you have the you have the devices and data data sources on top of you have the data consumers utility operators public users between these these data consumers and data sources this particular layer takes care of this entire entire data handling data manipulation business data which is emerging from these layers mature into information when it goes into this these guys do not need data data is useless they need information how this data be matured into information is the question of this of this smart grid so one got to understand that smart grid is not merely extraction of data extraction of data from data points it is far more elaborative far more deep getting this data and analyzing this data crunching this data down to a point where decision makers and people who want to understand what's happening get information so data to information maturity is achieved through this layered and tiled structure layered and tiled structure now go down to this in one more step you will see that this particular thing is creating a data network creating a data network scattered across multiple of application centers field staff network control center management data management centers these things now these are the individual elements or these are the boq of the smart grid but you got to understand the fact that this smart grid is residing on the electrical grid electrical network so these are two layers of networks bottom layer you have the electrical network on top of that we are trying to lay roll another layer which is a information layer which is a data layer we are all these electrical equipment people who are working got a footprint in the data data network and they while they do their jobs they do their services they do the operations and electrical network they create a data footprint they cast they reflect the data footprint onto this smart grid layer where their presence are being analyzed through artificial intelligence machines do data crunching data analytics big data operations to create information which have never been available on the on the electricity grid and now i'm sure the other presenters will be going detail into energy transition and the challenges associated with energy transition and once when you have that degree of information that degree of transformation to your in energy system or the major network which is carrying out the energy mainstream the electricity network only when we have that degree of trans transparency that we can effectively economically experientially face the energy transition it is imperative that i got to mention in this particular moment that this is crowd work this is crowd work we are walking with a crowd it's not that we are all alone going in a in a free field rest of the sectors are transformed so at least we got to walk in that pace if we don't then people we will hit on people we will fall and we will be trapped so if not leap from classic situation is you must leap from and jump into the front of the crowd and lead the crowd generally all over the world and during the history in sri lanka as well we were leading transformation we were the guys who faced the transformation first unfortunately today in my personal estimation we are lagging behind the other sectors are going into these technologies far smoother and far efficient than us there are more reasons for this i don't say i don't i don't say that this is happening without a reason there we have our own reasons 
but still the fact is a fact yeah we are getting little bit we are little bit backward so at least we got to walk now the crowd is we are we are we have fallen to the crowds we got to at least walk with the crowd or or we got to leave from and jump to our ori original position of leading the crowd and we must walk as leaders so this smart grid is that's why i said this your topic is very tightly very well identified energy transition got to be handled through smart grid and for that we got to capture whatever that time that we lost and leave from and lead the crowds in this transition in a, it is not only that energy is in transition the entire society in the world is in transition so in that transition energy should lead i will just go to the second part of my presentation in talking about the challenges what we face there are fundamentally two types of challenges you saw the major that the data consumer the top layer was comprising of two classes of people one thing is the utility operators and other one is the consumers or the public so i am just uh, trying there the, the the nature of the challenges that these two classes or these two guys face are two different so i like to cluster the challenges the operator this network of this data network as well as the utility network two networks are operated by the same same people the the challenges that they face first thing is the device management there is a device layer which are the which are the drop down from this data layer onto the utility network so these devices are not the devices that we are we are friendly of we are fond of and we are used to these devices are different class of devices so this device management while we manage the utility network is going to be a challenge they got to be installed the the usage got to be managed in this usage management always there are changes happening to these devices Say a classic example is a meter. Now meter got three IDs. The meter ID is there. The the modem ID is there. Then the SIM number is there. In addition, in the utility presence, this meter got the account number also. Now these four numbers got to be married. Sometimes we go and change a meter. We take a meter from one place and put that meter to another place. we actually remove this meter keep it for some time in the stores and you don't know another person when somebody is asking a connection or something we this meter will go to another place sometimes we take off the modem if the modem is having a problem then we take off the modem and put a new modem with the same sim there are certain instances we can take off the sim say for an example this time tender is won by one utility operator one network operator next time another person so all the sims got to be changed then we will be changing sim or probably a particular place doesn't have signal of one particular operator but other operator got good signal so we may be taking off the sim and putting a new sim so once when these things are happening there is a massive usage management otherwise otherwise somebody's electricity bill go to another person we think the telephone number in that house is one particular number we dial that and read but probably that sim is in another one's house so this is this these got to be very pertinently managed and the, another one is removal when the when the meter is burnt when we take off that 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 removal process got to be managed otherwise these seems these modems can be used for some other purpose and finally the firmware updates there may be time by time to time this firmware got to be updated on these modems on these meters then how those things to be handled these things are the challenges what the operator face pertain into device there is a substantial management aspect pertaining to managing this because the problem is this is not one device or two devices we are looking is hundreds hundreds of thousands of millions of devices once in this network is in full full operation so carrying out these operations or these management for these devices scattered all over the country unless we have a very robust management system 
is going to be a major problem. Then the second thing is user management. Now, this is, these are the devices and there are users also. Every electrical consumer will be a user. These users got to be authenticated. So these users got to be, they have the individuals got, must have a password. They should have a mechanism of changing the password. We must have a, we must ensure that the person who logs in is the right person. These passwords are not being hacked. And the consumers may change. Name changes are happening every day, not in small numbers. I had, I, I got 600,000 customers. Out of these 600,000, generally per annum, we are getting about 20,000 to 24,000 new connections. And we are getting about 15,000 name changes. 15,000 name changes for an annum is approximately 50 name changes per day. 50 to 70 name changes per day is okay. People are changing houses, people are selling houses, people are buying houses. So with that accounts are being, names are changed. Together with that, continuously, this profile management, role transfers and profile management got to be taken place. So names got to be deleted, email numbers to email addresses to be deleted, uh, the, the passwords got to be deleted, mobile numbers got to be deleted and new numbers to be in, put in, whereas these numbers will migrate into CB or somewhere. So this is, this is a, a minute mistake in this will create a take of issue. For an example, you see now we have, we have opened this e-billing e facility. So people can register for e-billing with us. Now once when the person is being registered to the e-bill, we got to ensure that that particular person's email is always correct. People change emails. People sometimes give their official email. When he changes his job, that email is deleted or that email is changed. But we keep on sending the bill to that particular email. He forgets the fact that this email has been changed. He forgets he has given this email to the utility. He may be sending an email saying that my email is changed. Ladies and gentlemen, change your change at your end the, the email. But for us, we, it is an automated system. So once when we get that email, probably our email server will reject that. And we will start keep on pushing our bill to the good old email and that email, will, that bill will be rejected. Then of course we got to diagnose this problem and there must be a staff who is taking care of this. Access control and security. People should have security. People should not understand or, or apprehend the fact that through the credentials that they give to us, they are, they are, email accounts can be hacked. So our security should also be in the same level as the, as the other, other security cloud. And uh, operator base, next challenge is data management. We are seeing huge amount of data. This data should be cleaned. This data should be buffered. This data should be able to be in a disaster situation to be recovered. And this data got to be warehoused, properly indexed and warehoused for future use. And these warehouses, we should have mining tools driving into these warehouses and bring the required data back. So this data management, because what we are seeing is a huge network. Almost everybody is present in this network, which is not, it is not as small as the Google accounts in Sri Lanka or a bank account, bank, bankers, the digital system, those are small. What we are looking at the entire population. This day, in this database, if the smart grid is going to be developed in right manner, all the electricity in, in what is this problem with CB and Lego? Problem is every each and everybody got an account with us. There is no bank, no other utility. No other service got that. Kargilis is not serving of everybody in the country. TLC is not serving everybody in the country. People ask why these customer services are not great as TLC or Kargilis. Our case is different. We got everybody in the, in the ranks. 
So th these things are going to be massive. Large databases and the, the, the aggressiveness of this problem is quite several folds compared to the other net. And there are some user-based challenges as well. The one thing is the data privacy. The prioritizing of data, interchange management, data interchange. Now we functionally get this, we get the credentials of all our customers, all, all, almost entire public. This data got to be interchanged with, and especially with some, when somebody comes in to create an account with us, we got to check the ID. So this must be checked with the National Identity Card Office. So, likewise, this data, if we are siloed this data within our context, it's useless. So, data, this interchange management must also come in and authorize sharing. Our data also should be shared with other databases, but in an authorized manner. So, the user got to authorize them. User got, got to prioritize their private data and their public data. And user got to give interchange and interchange and sharing authorities. So, user got a certain certain role to play and the national national legal system basically most of these issues are got to be enacted i know that to the data priority data privacy act and the data security act both these things are in in build stage this acts got to come in and uh, data got to be just like another another commodity or just like another property this data also got to be managed so these are the now finally i got to tell you one small thing this particular thing what we are looking at cannot be tended this particular thing what we are looking at is not something that you can just tend as one number smart grid and call for that we have to understand very very clearly that we got to understand very very clearly this is got this got built by ourselves we got to take the challenge and build by ourselves that tile structure that layered structure is not something is can be built by one particular person one particular company is coming into the picture as well as it must be the layered structure you cannot purchase a gi system complete database, server, and devices. You cannot purchase the smart metering system, database, the hidden system or the server, and the network. Everything by one person just should be by that and fix it. That is not what is called smart meter. That's not going to create the smart meter. That's going to create silos of data. That's going to create uninterchangeable set of data which is creating a massive monster around our, our network which is not going to give the synergy and the scalability that we expect. So we got to understand as engineers, essentially, essentially this got to be built by ourselves. This got to be built by ourselves. We are the engineers, we should take the challenge and build it. And I wish to very emphatically mention in this particular instance that it is the challenge and it is the opportunity. It is the opportunity that the engineers create for the public and the users. We as engineers, our role is not limited to doing engineering. Most of us read our role as just doing something is our job. No, our job is creating opportunities for other people. Engineer by the name is created by, not by engine, it's ingenuity. We as engineers, we got to create opportunities for the rest of the people to live on this earth, doing business and earning their lives. If you look at today in the society, everybody else got a business because of engineers. So equally, the smart grid will also be a massive business opportunity for the business community in the, in the country. We got to develop it in that manner. We should not look into buying things from 
foreign countries and getting them and fixing them. We should look into this aspect in a manner that the engineering students, the other students who are qualifying from our universities today to have a job through this, through this massive transformation. We as engineers, we should create that environment, that, that investment environment, that entrepreneurship environment and that innovation environment. That's our job. Having said that, I wish to thank the forum and let the other eminent speakers to fill in their gap in uh, dialoguing the smart grid as a technology option for energy transition. Thank you very much.